well, it was too, too windy today in DUI to film outside. Um, but here instead you are, sat in our living room with me at my sofa. And today we're diving into the next part of our intentional life, looking at vulnerability. Something transformative happens in vulnerability. And so it's Monday night and we are gathered for our contemplative prayer group as we do each Monday. And we've opened, um, we've had a beautiful meal. We've opened um, this Bible story and we've read it together. And then we've prayed and there's a moment to share if anyone wants to. And Amy takes a deep breath and then she shares. And she says to the group, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to cry. She shared about how she and Wayne had watched um, Ronan sleeping so deeply and how they had nearly lost him, how they'd nearly lost him and they had feared the very, very worst, how she desperately cried out to God and she called upon others to cry out and pray to God for her little boy, Ronan. And the room just held the space with her. People leaned in and they held her with their gaze. And we said to her, Thank you, Amy, we, we hear you. Something beautiful happened that night because Amy took a risk. She risked this emotional exposure and she was met by a room, a group of people who stepped in and loved her. And she was, she was met by the love of God. We're in this series, aren't we, on the intentional life. We're looking and each week at a slightly different focus as part of the intentional life. And I've, I've loved that journey that we've gone on. And I wonder if this intentional life is, if it's about pointing our lives towards Jesus, well, then that is going to require vulnerability. It's going to require us to come as we are, come real and raw with other people and with God. And it's a risky position to live in, isn't it? This undefended kind of space and a kind of constant openness towards other people. And it means that others could wound us, doesn't it? That's, that's always the risk. Vulnerability, the very beginning of that word, vulnera, um, the Latin kind of, um, it comes from the Latin to wound. That's where that word comes from. And so there is this sense of 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 openness to, to risk and to uncertainty and to being wounded. But it's only if we take this risk that there's also the possibility of the opposite, that others might gift us, free us, even love us. Richard Rohr, and you're probably realising I'm a bit of a Richard Rohr fan girl, <laughs> um, but he talks about this idea of the Trinity, the three in one, um, this crazy three in one head mess that we believe in as Christians, but that God is absolute vulnerability between the three. We heard about the dance of the Trinity, didn't we? And this kind of um, this wanting more for one another and, and freeing each other up. Um, but that also there's this picture then of God, the absolute vulnerability between three. God is modelling vulnerability in his very self. And so in today's story, in Mark 5, we meet the woman who's been bleeding for 12 years. And this bleeding has meant that she, her body is literally weakened by it. Her, um, she's been driven to poverty because of it. And she's, she's an outcast as a result. And so we meet her in the scene and the scene is busy. There is a crowd kind of gathered around Jesus and they are on their way to Jairus's house. He's come to Jesus and he's begged him to come to his house and to heal his daughter. And right into that scene, right into that busy crowd is, is the woman um, there hidden in amongst the crowd. And she is desperate, desperate to meet with Jesus. She's, she realises it might make all the difference. It might be her chance to find healing and wholeness. And so in amongst the busyness of the crowd, she reaches out and she touches his hem. And Jesus immediately, it says in the passage, he, he feels the power leave him. And, and the woman immediately feels the impact in her body. There's a change in her body. And Jesus turns around and he said, who, who touched me? And the disciples are... <laughs> where do we start Jesus I mean you are literally surrounded by a crowd <laughs> like you're being touched on all sides but he says again 
who touched me? And the woman is frightened, but she steps forward and she tells him her story. And he turns to her and he says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. This daughter shows us the vulnerable way, doesn't she? She's open, she's determined, she believes that it will make all the difference. And when we look at this story and so many other stories, we see that Jesus has no checklist um, for healing. He asks, will you step out in vulnerability? Are you open? If so, let's do this. And so this is the invitation, isn't it, this week to live the intentional life, to do that with vulnerability and something transformative happens in vulnerability. Brené Brown, how could we do um, any mention of vulnerability and not mention St Brené? But she says, um, if you haven't, um, she, she says, vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy and creativity. It is a source of hope, empathy, accountability and authenticity. So I wonder this week, what would it look like to live this intentional life with vulnerability? I wonder, where are you real? Where do you risk emotional exposure? Could you do that with one or two others as we travel this journey of faith together? And may you come as you are, just as the woman did with Jesus. Come to Jesus as you are, open and believing it will make a difference.